Hey guys, what is up? So I've got a couple of super duper important announcements before I dig into the Ask Laurel thread. And I just wanted to direct your attention over here to the library section. You're gonna see this is a brand new section inside the portal. And this is just the beginning of a lot of stuff to come. Now, please be patient. This first one is under construction, but I turned 42 last week. Yes, 42 years old. <laughs> and so what I did was over the course of the last seven days, I have went through my entire social media post for the last five years. And I just took a look at everything and I was like, what were the top 42 posts that made me the most amount of money over the last five and a half years? And what I've done is I've organized them into a swipe file. Now, there's going to be a shit ton of these power posts. I'm still going through all of those um, because once I started going through everything, I had over a hundred. And so now I am going through all of my power posts. Who knows? I might put all of them in, but um, I thought it would be fun because I turned 42 to do my 42. But um, your patience is appreciated. I am a one woman show when it comes to creating content. And so just be patient. But when completed this entire section for each one of these, it's going to have a Google Doc that will have the swipe file, a video that it's going to explain why it worked, and the social media post example. So if we go into the cash to now post, um, I just wrapped up the research post. And so you could see here, I have showed you guys the actual thing. You can swipe the copy. So as you are doing this, you can literally just swipe the copy and replace it with yourself. Um, I did a nine minute video of showing you guys how to use this and how it worked for with a client example. And then obviously how to, you know, the executing the messenger flow from uh, getting these uh, people from messenger onto a call. But this will be stocked with 42 different types of posts. And um, some of them are cash now two step posts. Um, there's going to be long form power content that I call power posts, pre launch posts. Like for those of you guys who are about to launch something. These are some of the posts that I used in order to, you know, pretty much get people to raise their hand before I even launched it. And then obviously if you're new or you're trying to get your audience to um, get indoctrinated, I pulled some of my old posts that I did whenever I first started and some of the, the posts that um, I've been teaching some of my students who are new. And so this is gonna be literally just full of stuff that you guys can use. And then I started putting in these frequently asked questions. Like one of the things that we get asked the most is how do you have conversations on YouTube? Well, I've got a resource there. Um, should you ask people to opt in for your value bomb? How to execute my ad strategy on a limited budget? Um, so this, this library is gonna get bigger and bigger as well. And one of the things that I'm adding here in the next 30 days is something that people have paid over $15,000 to get access to. And so I'm gonna tease you guys a little bit right there. But we head into the Facebook group, okay? We do have a new rule that I am starting to put in place. And this is only going to help you guys be better at just going out and doing something that my mentor calls engaging the field, okay? So since we are almost at our 4,000 student capacity, uh, moving forward in order to ensure that we keep getting the best results for you guys, we're gonna be implementing a new rule and principle here in the Facebook community. A lot of you guys have heard me say that it's 90 days to data. And when I say data, I mean your data, not someone else's data. And so this means that you just need to start engage the field as my mentor, Mr. Nick Peterson says. And so how to engage the field instead of asking how many video views will I get if I spend $5? Well, the only way to know the real answer to how you will do is by engaging the field. And then you can ask a question that is supported by that data. So you could say I spent $5 and got X number of video views and then list your question here. This shows us and tells us that you did something and provides us what we need to know to help you with your real personal data. The more you engage the field, the more data you get and the more that we can actually help you, right? So don't ask questions like, will this strategy work for me on this? Engage the field and come back with a question because guys, at the end of the day, this strategy works. It does not matter the niche. I have been doing this for over six years in the online marketing space, over 20 if you count the time I've spent in television. And guys, marketing works. It does not matter the niche, okay? So trust the process and everything will be okay, okay? So 
Now, let's go into the featured section. This is also, I want to remind you guys that every single week you should be looking at the featured section. This is where I have all of the upcoming Zoom calls and everything that you need to know. That is super important. A lot of people are like, well, Laurel, I missed this. Well, it's because you haven't been checking the featured section every single week, okay? So let's go ahead and dig into the Ask Laurel thread. Make sure that before you are asking a question that you read the rules and you know exactly how it works because if you break the rules, I've just got it to where my team just deletes the question, no questions asked because um, my team doesn't have time to go back and forth telling you which rule you broke. It is clearly laid out. If you want me to approve your power offer, here's the way to do it. Um, deadline is always five o'clock on Wednesday, central standard time. Sometimes it's a little bit earlier, but it's always around the five o'clock. Sometimes we have to shut it off a little early because we're traveling, but also because we're traveling, sometimes it gets shut off a little late. So it goes both ways. And then question, questions are answered live on Thursday. Um, there's no set time. I do these as my team sees fit for me. Um, they'll put it on my calendar on Thursday when they see that I have time. So right now, this is when I'm doing it. But if you're ever stuck, just go to the home section, guys. It says start here and follow the step-by-step -step rules. Your first three assignments right here, head to the get ready protocol, start with assignment one, go to assignment two, as you can see, get ready protocol. Here you go, assignment number one, assignment number two, and assignment number three. Cool, so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna dig into these questions. Miss Vanessa says, I have posted in the group for running events on my personal profile into the public event. Can you show me or us how you run your event, your business page and best practices for this? We are planning another event in June three to five so that I can implement the power offer and power content. I'm starting fresh, so I need to set up my inactive dead pixel. Okay. I know I answered this under her post right here because I wanted to, I wanted everyone to see this, but I'm going to go over it right here. So this is um, how I would treat any Facebook event. Remember the ecosystem is always built around some type of offer, right? And, and so in this case, it, it's Vanessa's event. And so this is how I do it. And I know I, I should do a video on this because this question comes up a lot. But what I do is I actually run the, an actual ad in the ads manager. So the first thing that I do is I create an event using my business page and I set it to public. The reason that I do this is because you can retarget everyone who engages with that event. And so that's why you wanna use your business page and not your personal profile. Now I know you can run ads using your personal profile, but you lose the capability to retarget people who are engaging with that content. And so that's why I always do everything with my business page when it comes to anything that I want to be able to retarget for, okay? So step number two, is you're gonna use an engagement objective with the optimization for event responses. Step three, you're gonna create your ad set and select the event you want to promote. Easy peasy, I do this for all of my public webinars, okay? Let me actually pull this up so that you could actually see what this looks like. Okay, so I'll pull up one of this, these real estate events that I did just to kind of show you guys how I did it. And so I set this up as an engagement campaign. If I go to the ad set level, you can see here my conversion event is on my ad, but my engagement type is event responses. And then everything else is set up exactly the same. And then when you get to the actual ad level, you can see right here, it will actually let you create um, this using the actual event. So um, it'll say destination right here, and then you'll select your Facebook event and then you can actually build the ad here. And so I just basically use the same cover photo um, for the ad, but you can see here, I wrote um, some copy for it. And then um, it'll, when you select the, the, the destination, your Facebook event will pop up right here. Now this has to be done with a business page. Otherwise this will not show up. Okay, let's go back into the Ask Laurel thread. Okay, let's see, Andrea says, hey Laurel, Probably my question was not asked clearly in the last Ask Laurel. Let me try again. I'm using collaboration and guesting strategy as one of my legion strategies, meaning I contact other experts in my field to get onto their podcast, do a workshop in their communities with the goal to promote my offer, lead magnet to their audience. Okay. I want to use a way similar to your organic strategy to contact those experts and pitch collaborating together, meaning I would either 
Comment in external Facebook groups on potential podcast host collaborations and offer my value bomb. Get them to comment, build connection and messenger, get them on a call and then pitch me being on their podcast or share power content. I would not do this. I would do direct outreach. So if you want, okay, so I would not use this strategy. Like I, I would not to get them on podcasts. They're not your ideal clients. You are trying to get on their thing, right? So here's the way that I get on people's podcasts, okay? What I do is I do something that, um, and this is a shout out to Dana Derricks, the Dream 100 approach, right? What you wanna do is you wanna make a list of the 100 podcasts that you feel you would be a great fit. Now, here's the thing. My friend Steve Sims would probably say, go for stupid, meaning shoot for the stars. I like to shoot for people who have my audience, but they're just one step ahead of where I am. They're not too far ahead to where they'll look at me and be like, who are you? So meaning I would probably want to be on more so colleagues, right? Colleagues podcasts. The way that I would do this would not be anything like this. I would actually create a signature talk for a podcast. So anytime that I want to be on people's podcasts, I always say, hey, I would love to come and teach the $5 video ad that grew my business to seven figures. That is the name of it. And I always pitch it the same way. Like, hey, you know, I have a 10 minute presentation. I have a five minute presentation. Like, like I have a five minute presentation of this. I have a 10 minute, I have a 30 minute, and then I have a 45 minute. And so you can actually give them the same, like the same options and just say like, this will add value to your audience because of X, Y, Z. A bonus thing is if you have already been listening to these people's podcasts, talk about an episode that you feel your thing would complement, right? Because then you could say, hey, I heard this episode, for instance, right? Um, let's say I wanted to be on, uh, let's see, Onyx Signals webinar podcast, right? I could say, hey, I have a $5 ad that would literally skyrocket the results that your students would be using, using that strategy from podcast episode, blah, 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 right? I have something that would pair really well with it. You could link back to it. Um, I think it would be a win-win. One of the other things that I do is I say, hey, I always run ads to any podcast that I'm on. No one's gonna say no if you're spending money running ads to their podcast. And so that's a couple of things that I, that I do in order to get on people's podcasts. But I will say this, the more that you run my ecosystem strategy, people will be reaching out to you. I don't even have to reach out anymore. People just reach out to me now. So that's pretty cool. Let's see, Jim says, I love the content so far. Thank you very much. I've been running my cold traffic campaign for a while and I have 2,825% video views for power content and 365 views on my conversion multipliers. However, when I make my video viewed audience of each, it shows less than a thousand for both. I get that for the conversion multiplier, but not for my power content. Any thoughts or things to suggest around this? Is it okay to start my warm retargeting? Is something broken? What is the minimum number of taught of members to start your warm retargeting. No, Jim, this is the perfect time to start retargeting. If you go into the program phase one, adding content to your warm traffic, this is a video that will actually walk you through how to add and you can start retargeting as soon as a thousand people. I think a lot of people don't think that retargeting is in phase one, but retargeting is in phase one. So make sure that you're watching this. As far as the question around why am I only getting um, if I have this many video views, why is my audience only showing X amount of views? It could be that you want to double check that your content's not being shown on the audience network because any views on the audience network will not count. And also you want to look at unique views. It could be that the same people are watching your, your video content. It, it's quite possible. Um, let's say, because like, think about this, right? If you're running three pieces of content and one person is watching all three, it's only going to count as one, right? Because it's the same, it's the same person in that audience size. So a couple of, a couple of reasons why that could be happening, but I wouldn't worry about it too much. I don't worry about stuff like this. Jim, keep moving forward. You're doing good, buddy. Let's see. Sharon says, hello, I'm getting started today with the get ready protocol. Will Laurel strategies work if I launch a $7 indirect offer value bomb instead of a free indirect offer value bomb for context? It's a mini mindset. I don't recommend this. I recommend just following my strategy. Um, low ticket offers cost more to run. Again, if you have a low ticket offer, what you want to do is you want to actually, so in the get ready protocol, if you choose your sales mechanism, 
you will see how expensive a low ticket offer can actually run you. Um, but I don't recommend, I just, I, what I recommend is um, just giving stuff away for free in the beginning to get the conversations, right? Um, I, don't, I don't recommend anyone starting with a $7 value bomb because a $7 is not an indirect offer. That's an offer. That's not an indirect offer. If you, if you charge for it, that's, a, that's an offer. Um, so hopefully, that was, hopefully that's clear. Let's see, Quentin says, please, please, please help me to understand correctly. At first, organically, can I run the program from a professional profile because of the good reach and asking for a friend's option? After that, how to manage ads for my business page without losing my audience or confusing them with a profile? I've got both and no one ever gets, no one ever gets um, confused. I run all of my content from my profile. I run it from my business page. I run it from Instagram. I run it from YouTube. It's not something you have to worry about. Um, but I would, I would put everything on your business page as well. Um, for the longest time, for about a year, I just posted everything that I did on my profile to, to my business page and my YouTube channel. I just, I just copied everything. So don't, don't overthink this. Let's see, Francois says, hey, Laurel, I've been going through the optimizing your first content flywheel. I'm getting my, let's see. Uh, let's see, getting my 1,025% content views a week at about 10 cents per 25% view, which seems to be good. I am, however, getting zero messenger conversations on my conversion multiplier ads. Just updated the ads to see if new ones would get a result. I stumbled on a video where you really nicely broke down how to typically brainstorm 15 immediate short problems your ideal client is looking to solve and how you can then convert those into value bombs and then into a conversation conversion multiplier and then onto power content, which clarifies the process a lot for me. I serve a small to medium sized business owners and ultimately help them structure or systemize their business so that they can remove themselves from the day to day operations. Can you please clarify the following for me? When trying to brainstorm immediate short problems, I come up with two categories. One, Overall burning issues, like they fight fires all day long, their operations is chaos, and they want to fire their entire team. Their staff keeps asking them what to do all the time. This is a great, these are two great problems. Um, fight fires all day long needs to be more specific. Their operations is chaos. That's a situation. Fight fires all day long is a situation. So what are all of the problems that are causing them to fight fires all day long? Their problem is probably their, sca their staff keeps asking them what to do all the time. What are other things that are making them fight fires all day long? Let's see, issues specific to my process. I don't know where to start when trying to systemize my business. I don't know how to create a process. I don't know how to create an effective SOP. I don't know how to get my team to use SOPs. I don't know how to create a dashboard that tracks the health of each system at a glance. These are all great problems right here, by the way. The first above seems more situation-based as the solutions are not quick fixes. This you advise to avoid, right? The second, however, seems more problem focused, but it is very technical, granular, and specific to my framework, which I'm not sure my audience will always get or understand in a quick content, multi content multiplier ad. Should I just continue to test and iterate on the second more specific ones that I think my audience weren't always necessarily get? Or is there something big that I'm missing here? No, there's nothing big. I think any business owner would understand this. I don't, I don't get the confusion. I think this would, this would be perfect. Like this is stuff, if I was scaling and building a team, these are all things that I would ask for. Like, I don't know how to get my team to use SOPs. I don't even have a team, right? I have two friends, you know, my wife and my best friend help me run this program. Um, but I don't know how to create a process, right? I don't know how to create a process for what, right? You can, okay, so, so let's say this is too big and you're like, well, Laurel, I can't create a video on this. This would probably be a 60 minute video. Cool, well, what are all of the parts of that video? Can you break them down into smaller wins, right? I don't know how to create a process. Well, step one, what is step one of creating that process? And what is the problem that that step one is solving? So that's how I that's how I would back into this. But by the way, Francois, this is really good stuff. A lot of people freaking need it. As a matter of fact, one of the best performing power offers I have ever seen in my life was a power offer that simply said, I will take any task in your business and create an SOP for it within 24 hours. Would you take me up on that offer? And that is one of the best power offers I've ever seen work. So. Yes, all of this stuff is real. You, you've got a lot of good stuff there. Let's see, Ansh says, hey, Laurel, I only have a $10 budget for my ads and I'm currently allocating it as follows. $5 a day on power content to build an invisible list, $2 per day on retargeting ads. So if I only had $10 a day to spend, I honestly would be, I would spend it on the conversion multipliers, hands down. Like if anyone only has $10 to spend, $10 to spend every single day, I would literally just be doing conversion multipliers. That is going to get you conversations. Um, that's what I would do. 
I would not, if I didn't have more than, if I did not have, if I only had five to $10, I would stick with conversion multipliers and value bomb ads. That's all I would do. I would, I would just do that. It's not you doing it this way is going to take forever. If you only have $5 a day on power content, it's going to take you forever to do that. So I would literally run conversion multipliers all day and then get people in messenger. Let's see. Sabine says, happy belated birthday. Great session last week. Thank you. On my value bomb, I started to have comments. So what I did, I replied to their comments on the post saying, check your DMs. Then inside the DM reminded them of why I'm con contacting them, referring to the post with the value bomb and use your script. They haven't read it. So it means it goes to their spam. Do you ever follow up when they don't respond? How do you get around this issue about it going into their spam or other inbox guests? You can't do much. It's about the numbers now. Yes. Expect 40, only 40% 40 to get your message. 60% will not. But as you run the ecosystem, that number will keep rising. So that's good. And this is just, this is just part of the game. It's volume. Um, one of the things though that I do is I always send them a screenshot of the message that I sent to them. Um, and I, I, I typically do it from my personal profile. Even if I'm using my business page, I always respond with my personal profile and I always friend people. I always friend people who um, ask for my value bombs. That, I, I think that, that strategy has served me well. Let's see, Lee says, hey Laurel, I'm loving your training so far. I have a question about strategy context. My end goal is to get them into my membership site or one-on-one -on -one coaching if they qualify. I do not have any warm traffic or a list. I have sent cold traffic to my VSL before I joined your program. Results after cold traffic, ClickFunnels data opt-in, 36%. Got 20, sale, 20 sales rate was between, got 20, got 20. Sales rate was between 7% and 12% to cold traffic. Average cart value, $11. It cost me between 10 to 20 to get a sale paying on Facebook before I joined your program. What I have done so far is I've watched phase one of your ecosystem, watched Joel's course and got get ready protocol videos. I'm uncertain if my offer is validated. So I have set up a couple of strategies, but want your support on best direction. I have set up five power offers in text form to see which messaging lands best, sending them to my VSL membership offer. If I get sales, that's a bonus. I have also today started trying to run the power content strategy video a day straight to messenger, but not sure if I should also select Facebook feeds as your video and Joel says, just stories and reels as your training and your course says just Facebook and Instagram feeds. What should I do next? Option A, dial in the messaging, connecting with people on Messenger and have conversations. In which case, do I use the Joel training you just did just to have stories and reels as my five minute video is too long or make power content and send them to my VSL? I think you should build the ecosystem around this. I think you should build the ecosystem. That was, that's what you should do. If you have a ton of traffic that's already going here, right? So you're sending, so you're sending people here. I would build the ecosystem that is in phase three, if you do the slow, because what you essentially have is a slow, right? And so if you watch this bootcamp transitioning into phase three, I show you how you can have a quick win here with my hot seven sequence. That's probably the, the quick win that you're going to have. Um, but then what I would do is I would build backwards, right? I would put in the hot seven. Then I would go back and put in conversion multipliers and your power content and run it both to warm and cold. That's the way that I would actually do this. And so I would, you already have the funnel. Remember my ecosystem is built around a funnel. And so the very first black hole that you can probably get some quick wins is by utilizing this hot seven sequence. And so here I actually walk you through, um, why I, why I run this for people who are in your situation first. And I kind of back build the opposite way. Let's see, Annabelle says, hey, quick question about running multiple ad sets all with the same audience within one campaign. Someone has said that I'm bidding against, oh my God, bidding against myself, therefore I will pay a higher price. I don't worry about shit like this, honestly. I'll just say it, I don't, I don't worry about stuff like this. I think all of these little gurus want you to think that this actually matters. It does, like, I've made millions of dollars running these low dollar ads and I've never, I never worry about stuff like that. Honestly, the big boys do not worry about stuff like that. You guys shouldn't worry about stuff like that. Um, should I therefore have three different audience? Just set up everything the way that I have it in the program. How about that? <laughs> but I get it. I get it. Facebook is probably telling you stuff. Let's see. Should I therefore have three different audiences for three different power content ads? I've really just been, I don't, I, I use the same audience over. I've been using the same audience for six years now. I've really just been using a broad audience. So could split it according to age, but that feels, yeah, it's, 
you guys are like, this is overcomplicating it. Should I ignore what was said? Stick to the same broad audience. I remember you saying that most of the time the audience is not the problem anyway. I'm mostly hitting KPIs. Yeah, keep doing what's working. Don't let, like, here's the thing. All of these gurus are coming at you guys wanting you to think that something is better than the other. I always say test. Like if it makes you feel better to test the other thing, who knows? It might be better, but I guarantee you it's not because you're bidding against yourself. It might just be that another audience is also going to resonate with your content. But I don't worry about little things like that. Like I don't, I don't do all of these little hacky things. Like I just worry about am I putting content in front of the right audience? Is the audience engaging with it? Um, but yeah, Annabelle, just keep doing what you're doing. It seems like it's working. So if 30 cents for 25% video view is still too expensive, keep trying new audiences and keep trying new videos, right? Just keep following the flywheel. But yeah, don't, don't let other people derail your progress. Just stay the course. Gusta says right now I charge about a thousand for eight weeks of one-to-one -one coaching. We meet once a week and I've gotten four paid clients. However, I haven't been able to close new clients in the last two months. I have had about 13 sales calls, and I'm sensing that some clients are simply resistant to handing over a thousand to someone they don't really know. They have seen my videos, obviously, but it's the first time we speak. Yeah, all the time. So I'm thinking of trying to get them in for one paid session and then upsell future sessions. My idea is that once you have paid someone, it's much easier to keep paying them. So implementing psychology, is, I don't. I don't focus on this kind of stuff. And I, I know it kind of sounds like I'm poo-pooing all y'all's ideas, but I, I, here's, at the end of the day, this is, what I, this is what I want you guys to understand. I'm going to finish reading this, and then I'm going to tell you guys my two cents, and then you guys can take away the most helpful thing for you. I don't want to implement a low-ticket offer and build a list as I need cash flow, but at the same time, I feel like I need to get them in a funnel with something lower than one to $2,000 first payment. What are your thoughts? Okay, these are my thoughts, and like I said, you guys can take it or leave it, but this is the way that I look at it. I know you guys are trying to like, I, you hear the Ascension model and you hear all these things like people who pay, pay attention and all this stuff. Like, here's the thing. I literally just use this ecosystem that I'm showing you guys here in this program to do one thing and one thing only. That is to show up consistently and be of service to people. If you wake up every single day and you have the idea, how could I be of service to people? Like every day, if you wake up and you're like, you know what, I'm going to help five people get over one problem today. And you sh keep doing that consistently, you will start to get clients. Getting them into one paid session is going to be just as hard as closing them into a $1,000 offer. It just, that's the way it is. Like just getting people to give you money is just getting harder and harder. But the reason that I built the ecosystem this way is so that you guys can have meaningful conversations in Messenger and be able to bring people onto a phone call so that you guys can just be of service. That's my two cents. Now take away from that what you want. But the way that I built this entire ecosystem is to intercept conversations because conversations are the fastest path to cash. I want to, as a matter of fact, like I try to just show up and be of service to people and I know it's hard when you need cash flow, but the more, if you can do a volume play, right? Like, honestly, like when my mentor gave me, um, when I needed cash flow, my very first mentor, Eddie Smith, he challenged me to get on 100 Zoom calls in 90 days and only do like 20 minute calls or whatever. And that was what I focused on. 100% I was like I'm gonna get as many people on zoom calls and guess what happened as a side effect of that I got clients and so if you just every day show up and you're like I'm gonna help five people whether that's in messenger it's on a zoom call it is so much easier to get people on a free call where you're helping them out and then transition into a sale there versus trying to get people into a paid session because getting people into a paid session is just going to be just as hard as getting people to pay for 1k for eight weeks that's just my two cents like I said do that as you will, right? Like if you need quick cash flow, if you like, I'm going to, I'm going to throw one extra point out there for you guys. Think about this. Okay. If you have talked to 400 people in 90 days, right? Let's say you're talking to, you know, let's just even go lower than that. Let's say over the last 90 days, you've only talked to a hundred people in messenger, right? And you're like, Laurel, I still haven't gotten anyone on the phone call. What you can now do is because you've talked to 100 people in Messenger, you know exactly, you have an idea of a problem that they need help solving. Invite all 100 people to a free workshop and get them all on one call and make a pitch. 
that is the that is what I teach my lean on Laurel students to do after they've gone X amount of time is like, okay, cool. You've had conversations in Messenger. They don't want to go onto a one on one call. Let's get them on a live workshop where you can help a whole bunch of people at the same time and then make a pitch. Let's see. Caroline says, hey, Laurel, I kind of need to have a better understanding regarding the ad setup and strategy. I just wonder if we have to use both use both same audience for power content and multiplier if the subject is the same. For example, why not retarget the 25% video views from power content to conversion multiplier ads? You can do that. It will just take longer to get results, right? Because then you'll have to, um, in the beginning, right? I'm trying to understand deeper the whole thing. Sorry, it's two questions, but I do run ads for a while. So I also come with a background and believe I am doing how you teach it, but I would be happy to get a little more insight and explanation, please. Yes, Caroline. So here's at the end of the day, right? In phase two, you actually do this, right? So if you go into phase two, um, ads ecosystem you should start with, like if you go into phase two right here, you will see that I do run warm traffic to conversion multipliers. But when you're starting out in phase one and you do not have traffic, you don't have traffic. It would take you forever to get enough warm traffic with power content to send to the conversion multiplier. So that's why in phase one, you need to do both until you have enough traffic so that you can move the conversion multiplier to phase two. So what I recommend you do to get a better understanding is actually go through phase one and then watch this video on adding content from war for warm traffic and see how that transition's made so that you can have a better understanding of this. I think that that's gonna help you. Let's see, Cheyenne says, I'm going through phase one, launch your power content ads. When it comes to the action taker script, is the problem of getting more core sales without running paid ads too broad? My solution will be to take advantage of the YouTube community tab feature. No, I like that a lot, Cheyenne. I think that's great. Let's see, Maggie says, new member and working through the content. Welcome, Maggie. We're happy that you're here. I'm already running a low ticket slow into a high ticket funnel doing 100K-ish per month. Oh my God, congratulations. This is the dream that everyone has. Goal is to one, lower ad costs and two, sell more high ticket from the low ticket buyers. I'm not sure how to best combine Laurel strategies with what I'm already doing. Direct off and ads. Well, newsflash, you are already doing what I'm teaching. You're just doing phase three. So one, either do a top of funnel approach with power content first and then do due to cold audience or tap into the warm audience and low ticket buyers already have, or to start with value bombs, get a cheat sheet first, and then it is to total warm audience. So my recommendation is to watch three and watch this boot camp to transition because what you want to do is you want to set up this hot seven sequence into actually getting people to both a phone call, but you also want to set up a second hot seven sequence to get those buyers who haven't bought the program. So essentially you're actually going to have two hot sevens. One that is going to go to buyers, right? And so you're going to retarget the low ticket buyers and retarget them to getting them into your high ticket funnel. The second hot seven you're going to run is going to be to the people who have um, hit your low ticket offer page, but they haven't bought. Okay. So we're, we're basically starting from the back of the funnel because you have a ton of warm traffic. And so you will likely get a very quick win. The next thing that I would do is I would retarget all of your warm traffic to power content. So I would re-engage it with power content. And then I would also run power content to cold. And so essentially you're building the phase three, um, of the slow, the entire slow funnel. Remember, and this is why I want you guys to watch this video. My ecosystem is built around a funnel. It is not to replace the funnel. A lot of times people are like, well, I'm not really following Laurel strategy because I do this, but this is actually following my framework. The ecosystem is not to replace any of this stuff. It is to be built around it. So hopefully that, hopefully you guys are starting to kind of see every single week. And I know, I know this is sometimes, this is so different than what everyone is, is, is teaching, but this is an approach that will literally keep your offer in front of your audience forever. That's all we're doing here is we're, we're meeting people where they are within your funnel and just retargeting them to that next step. We're just using content to basically pull people through the funnel. Let's see. Mahesh says, I've got a warm audience built for my high ticket offer. I'm beginning to do ads for them, but they are also a good audience for my ebook course and webinar. When would you integrate ads for those items? Well, whenever you are making cash flow, 
I don't recommend anyone doing any type of ads for any type of low ticket offer until you have filled your high ticket offer and have the cash flow to do so because these right here will cost you money and you'll need cash flow. So if you don't have the cash flow from this, you don't do this. But if you guys just start going through each of the phases, you will see how this actually works and how to actually transition into different things, right? Once you sell your high ticket, then you can go back and build out a funnel, right? Like a self-liquidating offer in order to support something like this, but you need the cash flow. Let's see, Dominic says, hey, Laurel, can you share the link to the book hooks 15 pieces document you used in this video? I would like to plug the hooks into chat GPT, just like you did. Absolutely. I will send them to your messenger. I am friend requesting you right now and I will message them to you as soon as I am done with this call. Let's see, Mo says, hey Laurel, I've been promoting a slow for the month of April and here are my main stats. Ad spend 1700, landing page views 1200, sales 51, so 3.9. So yeah, we want anywhere between three to 5%. So this is pretty good. Your cost per customer, 34. Average order value, $37. Revenue, 1900. Awesome. You are profitable. This is every marketer's dream is to have a slow profitable on the front end. So the ecosystem I have set up through your plan is definitely working and I'm happy about that. Awesome. But I'm having issues with Ascension. For context, I'm selling a low ticket fitness offer on the front end with the aim of selling one-on-one -on -one coaching on the back end. In your opinion, what should I be focused on right now in order to smoothly ascend low ticket customers into high ticket clients? You should be focused on making sure that your low ticket offer has a graduation framework, okay? So use the same graduation framework that I use here in this program. So if you go into the replay vault and let's see, is it conversions over coffee? I forget which one, yeah. It doesn't matter whether you have a Facebook group with a paid subscription or a free one, this is the graduation framework that I use in order to ascend people. So I highly recommend if you haven't seen this video yet to watch that. Let's see, Jeff says, hey, Laurel, I've been working on getting more specific as that was the feedback on my last conversion multiplier. Would you take a peek and give me your thoughts on this existing one? It's doing all right, but still not getting any comments. I don't know why, but I'm really not getting this. Is the clarity the client got and the 200X sales not specific or small enough? I'm just not sure where I'm off with these. Here's my conversion multiplier. Yep, let's see. Okay, let's see. Let's, let's take this line by line. Four simple questions I asked my client that gave her so much clarity she 200 she 200 x her launch sales. Who's, who are you talking to here? Like, who is this for? Would be my first question. I don't know if this is for me. Um, let's just keep going. Yeah, so here's the thing. I don't want questions that give, that give me clarity. Like I want, like, it just kind of sounds like, I, I actually just had this talk with one of my Lean on Laurel students cause she was giving away the questions too. And I was like, well, what is the result that those questions will get? At the end of the day, that gave her so much clarity. She 200 X her launch sales. And so the way that I had her rephrase it, cause she said five simple, the way, the, the way that my client had, had phrased it was, I asked these five questions on a sales call that earned me $10 million in sales. I was like, okay, but I don't want questions. Like, I don't want questions. And so the way that I had her reframe it was, here's what I changed about the, five, the first five minutes of every sales call that allowed me to close over 10 million in sales or something like that. Like, like I just literally changed the first five minutes. Do you want the five minute script that I, that I open every sales call with that made me $10 million or something like that? And so what, what about these four simple questions? Like I wouldn't raise my hand for this and I don't even know who you're talking to. And so my question to you would be like, wh what is the purpose of the questions? How did it give you clarity? Right. Um, uh, that 200 X her launch sales, like, is this like, what, what did it give her clarity on? That's what I'm missing. Let's see. Which, by the way, I love that Jeff submits stuff for me to look at. This is the perfect way to engage the field, right? We started off this call saying engage the field. This is the perfect example of engaging the field. 
Let's see. Oscar says, Laurel, I just watched your book, A Call Funnel, with the Choose Your Sales Mechanism section. When you run the ad to an application, does application mean like a pre-screening process of questions that appear prior to booking the call? Or is this a Calendly booking widget with the application itself? It could be both. I always tell people the least amount of friction when you need volume, right? Because the more questions you ask, the more friction it's going to cause and the less volume you're going to get. The least amount of questions you get, the more volume and the least amount of friction, right? So it all depends. If you need to practice sales calls and you need volume of sales calls, run it to a Calendly link that literally just says name, email, and one small validating question. That's the way that I do it. Woo! That was 40 minutes of fire. I hope that you guys enjoyed this session. As I said, the best way to utilize the Ask Laurel thread every single week is to engage the field, meaning implement what you've learned and then come back and say, Laurel, I did this. What did I do wrong? Or Laurel, I watched this video and I don't understand when you said at five minute mark, right? The more that I know that you're engaging the field and actually doing something, the easier it is for me to help you. I don't want to answer hypothetical questions or anything like that. I'm going to push you guys, right? 2024 is not going to get any easier for those of you guys who are in the, mo in the marketing online marketing space. It is only going to get harder, 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 harder. So engage the field and I'll see you guys next week.